Okay, welcome to this first video on PHP and MySQL. Uh, this first video is dealing with the bleeding obvious part, which is what is PHP and MySQL? And the very first question in the bleeding is part of that, which is what is PHP? Well, the cold hard facts of the matter is that PHP is short for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. Now, the a uh, acronym for this is a bit ridiculous because it includes PHP in its own acronym. Uh, that's called a recursive acronym. There are references that refer to the fact that PHP itself uh, was originally short for a personal home page. Uh, two things, there is no evidence that I can locate on that. And secondly, that doesn't add any more meaning to the system. The second thing to note about PHP is that it's what we call a server-side scripting language. That means that uh, the language itself is run purely on the server. Um, it's probably better to use a diagram. So let's refer back to what we had in the HTML. Let's have a look at your computer and the web server. Now, a couple of things that are worth noting at this point is that, first of all, congratulations, you've clearly upgraded your computer to a, a really nice looking laptop. Well done. And our web server in this case is gigantic. I mean, let's be honest, that is one hell of a size server. The Earth seems very small in comparison. But let's work with the system we've got. Um, when you make a normal request, when you type in www dots and anything, whatever, um, and it's to a normal, what we call a static website, that's one that's been written in HTML and CSS, then what will happen is you send the re web request, that's the www part. The server then simply hands over to your computer the HTML and the CSS document, um, and that's the transaction. So all the web server does is simply hand you the file, because the HTML and the CSS has already been written. How PHP alters that is actually quite uh, clever, but very, very simple. The system actually runs in a very similar way. The web page request is made as before, so from the user's point of view, there's no difference. You still type in www. and off it goes. It's what happens with the server that makes the change here. The first thing is, is that your web page request is received by a PHP page. That PHP is then executed. Your server actually reads the PHP. It runs through the PHP instructions. And from that, it creates the HTML document. That means the HTML did not already exist. The PHP has had to create the HTML. From that, the HTML returns uh, to your system just as it would before. So from the user's point of view, they've made a request, they've re received HTML or CSS. They did not become aware of anything else that's going on in the background. Why will you do that? Well, normally if I send a request for an HTML page, then the page I'm going to get coming back is going to be exactly the same page that any other human is going to be requesting. But PHP allows us to create dynamic web pages. Those are web pages that change dependent upon the user and how they're using it. That also allows you, the dynamic nature, allows you to include into your website things such as being able to log in, being able to react to forms. So if I complete a form, if I click on a drop down and select an item, then it can change my next experience of that website. It can make alterations. It also allows me to offer differing security levels. People can log in and they can be the administrator or a user or a client or whatever else. So PHP adds a whole new dimension to your HTML. It moves it from being static, boring, to being dynamic and engaging. That's the benefit of PHP. So, takes us to the next question. The next question is, what is uh, MySQL? Now, there are terms about this. First of all, it's a relational database language. Officially, it is called MySQL. Uh, I have referred to it, and lots of people will refer to it as MySQL. It's appropriately, it should be MySQL, but MySQL is perfectly fine, and no one's going to get uh, jumpy about that one. And if they do, tell them, go out and get a life. Um, SQL is short for sequential query language, and uh, MySQL and SQL are all forms of a fourth generation language. That's a, what we call a declarative language. Uh, quite simply, a declarative language is a language that doesn't tell the computer how to do something. We simply tell it what we want, and the computer knows how to do it. Um, when you make much more sense when we look at SQL, and we can look at the select command particularly. 
Some SQL commands are not declarative, they are what we call imperative, and those are third generation language characteristics. Uh, don't get bogged down with that, it's not necessarily, it's just one of those academic things that is worth knowing the terms. If you're listening to this from an A level point of view, MySQL is a declarative language, and you should already know what a declarative language is. So let's have a look at this system. Um, we already know what happened. So the request has been made to our computer. Our computer is now running the PHP script. And before it even generates the HTML, what actually happens is part of what it may be doing is it may be checking that you can log into this computer. Now, the PHP doesn't know if you can log in. It's got to get the data from a database. And PHP can't do it itself. The PHP will run a MySQL command. The MySQL command will then query a database. On that database are the files, so the MySQL will then receive the files from there and that will be passed over to the PHP. The PHP then can, uh, creates the HTML and we then come to the end of this uh, video. Hope that's been useful. See you in video two.